Hi, I am Hendrik Schafe and today I would like to tell you something about um, some work I did together with Sylvain Fontaine and Laura Hernandez. So I edited this at the LPTM at the uh, CYSG Paris University and well it's called the bridges to consensus. So the consensus part already hints that it's about opinion dynamics. So we are studying the development of opinions in some model society. The two premises that we take and which are probably the most fundamental premises of opinion dynamics um, are homophily, which means that we assume that um, agents interact only if they are somehow similar. The other premise is social influence, which means that agents which do interact become more similar. Uh, we are studying an established model, which is the Hickson and Krause model. Um, it contains n agents and uh, generally we are interested in the large n limit and each agent has an opinion which is some continuous number between 0 and 1 and here in the um, picture on the bottom I, I, I gave each agent um, a color and uh, its opinion is the uh, vertical coordinate. So the um, most important thing about the Hickson and Krause model is that it's a so-called bounded confidence model. So the homophily is implemented as a threshold value. So each agent can have um, some confidence, which is now shown as the um, error bars. And it can only interact with those which are within confidence. So um, here in this example, and in general, each agent could have his own confidence, but um, in our case, we are, for simplicity, um, restricting ourselves to a homogeneous society where every agent has the same um, confidence. So um, now each agent can interact within his confidence interval. And further, we introduce um, the constraint that it can only interact with agents which are also neighbors in some kind of underlying topology. And which topology we choose? Well, we, we will try different things, lattices or say scale-free random networks or just the complete graph where everyone can interact with anyone. And that is the case here. So on the right side, there is the um, uh, picture, the network of actual interactions. So this is the fundamental static topology restricted by the uh, bounded confidence. So you can see that Violet and green can interact, but violet cannot interact with red because they are outside of their confidence. So the dynamics of this model is a simple rule of averaging. Every agent interacts at the same time synchronously with all of its neighbors and assumes um, the average opinion of all its neighbors and itself. And um, well, let's do that in this example. So in the first step, the bottom three will interact and will get crossed together. And um, well, if we interact long enough, we will end up in a state which does not change anymore. And we will call that final state. And that is the state we are interested in. Everything I will tell you now is about this final state. And um, this state can have different um, characteristics. So for example, here we see um, a society of 100 agents and everyone has a confidence of 0 0.3. So you see, after quite only very few iterations, we arrive at a consensus opinion. Everyone has exactly the same opinion. Uh, but it's also possible for smaller values of epsilon that um, we end in a fragmented state where there are many opinions. And we are interested in basically the size of the largest final opinion cluster. So um, if it's exactly one, we will uh, call it unanimity. And if it's like one dominating opinion, we will call it consensus. So um, what do we know about this? Um, on a complete graph, um, we will always get consensus if the uh, confidence is above a threshold value of uh, about 0 0.2. On sparse topology, um, much less is known. So there is one study which um, 
looked at unanimity and it found that you only get unanimity and always unanimity if you are above 0 0.5. So it's far, far harder to uh, reach unanimity in sparse networks. We are interested not in unanimity because that is a very, very specific case, but we would rather um, study consensus where not every single agent has the same opinion, but the vast majority of the system has the same opinion. And um, well, now the question is, does it behave the same as unanimity or maybe not? And spoiler alert, it, it, it's much different from unanimity. Also, we want to ask, uh, well, is there a difference between, say, lattices and random networks? Because in the unanimity, there was none. Every sparse network uh, had this same threshold. So first, let's look at the uh, complete graph, the mixed population case. So um, here you can see some um, patterns. So generally, if you increase the uh, confidence on the uh, horizontal axis, then you also increase the size of the largest cluster. And um, that is not, not smooth. So you see there are some jumps. And also you can see here the critical point where um, you change from a state where you have two opinion clusters, which we call polarization, to consensus and even unanimity in this case. So um, what happens if we restrict the topology? So let's look at the lattice. Um, we choose a square lattice, but not only the next neighbors, so not only the violet ones here, but every neighbors which are colored here. So those are up to 30 nearest neighbors. So each node has 12 neighbors instead of four. And if you look at this, well, it, it looks different. Um, <laughs> you see that um, there is no bifurcation pattern anymore. And you can also see that the point where it changes from fragmentation to consensus is not at 0 0.2 anymore, but at 0 0.08. So the threshold to consensus is far, far lower. It's far easier to obtain consensus um, in a lattice than it's in a full population. And that is exactly um, the opposite <laughs> of uh, the unanimity, which was far harder to obtain. So that is interesting. What happens if we look at um, a random network? So in this case, it's a scale-free baravaji albert network with a similar degree. And um, it, it again looks different. We, we don't see this crossing of all the curves on one point anymore. Um, in fact, it looks like everything is shifting to the left for larger system sizes. So, hmm, <laughs> do we even have like a threshold value anymore? Um, to study this, we are looking at um, the variance. So the variance of this observable should be maximal in the, um, say, the steepest point of those um, downward sloping things. So um, if we look at the variance, you see here two peaks for every size. And uh, now this is easy to measure. If we look at the positions of the peak of each size and extrapolate that to infinity, uh, which is done in the inset, right? Well, <laughs> we see that it goes as a power law to zero. So the inset has double logarithmic axis. So this straight line you see there, uh, these two straight lines are both power laws going to zero for and to infinity. So that suggests very strongly that there is no threshold value for um, this scale-free graph. So if your system is large enough, then you will always get consensus. So this is quite strange. Can we understand why that happens? So for that, let's look at the actual dynamics. So here, um, this blob, <laughs> these are all 16,000 agents of one of these uh, Barabashi Albert networks. And uh, the colors, well, um, yellow means um, it's an opinion of uh, close to zero, and dark blue means it's an opinion close to one. So these are the initial conditions which are just uniformly random. Um, if we now let it evolve, 
So after 100 steps, it looks like this. So this is just a force-directed layout of this um, dynamic interaction network. And you can see that there are two clusters now, um, a green one and a blue one. And they are connected with only a handful of bridges between them. And uh, then there's a halo of, um, well, isolated nodes. So if we let it evolve uh, here after a thousand iterations of the dynamical rule, um, it persists. So the, um, the bridge in between the two blobs stays there. And if you look closely, well, you might notice that the color changes. So um, actually what happens is all the agents in those two blobs, they get closer together in opinion, mediated by the few agents in the bridges. So after 9,000 steps, um, they become even more similar, of course. Some of the bridges break because um, they are absorbed into one of the blobs. But still, in this case, there's still a bridge, like a single agent <laughs> between the two blobs. And um, if we um, go to 10,000 iterations, well, we finally converged into one consensus opinion. So can we now understand why um, this mechanism always leads to um, consensus? Well, yes. Um, a bridge is just a configuration of agents which are within each other's confidence and which are not connected too strongly to one of those blobs. So um, otherwise they would be directly absorbed into a block and the bridge would be broken. But the synchronous update of the um, model, well, it will preserve those bridges. They, they don't fluctuate. You always have this deterministic synchronous update. So they can persist over a really long time. And you only need one bridge for the whole network to um, be pulled into one consensus opinion in the end. This explains why we always observe this consensus opinion for large system sizes. You only need one bridge and the larger your system gets, the more chances you have to uh, have one bridge inside your configuration. Um, maybe some of you will ask now, what about the Defion model, which is the other famous bounded confidence model? And the answer is, it's different because those bridges cannot um, persist in a Defion model. If you have this Defion dynamics where you have pairwise interaction, which is also sequential, well, then your bridges will directly break in just a very few iterations. So in conclusion, we found that sparse networks are actually extremely good for consensus, which is in contrast to what the literature said before. So if you're interested in uh, reading more details about it or maybe playing yourself with the raw data, well, here are the references. And um, with that, I thank you very much for your attention. And maybe we even have some time for questions.